by a chamber or near to your attendance. <coughs> this is the trial chamber, a special court of Sierra Leone, held in Freetown, in courthouse number one, on Thursday, 3rd June 2004. Case number SCSL 2004-14. The prosecutor against Sam Hinganon, Moina Fokar, and Ali Okondo is listed for trial. We have the pleasure of inviting the prosecutor of the special court to the press conference today to present his opening statement. May it please this chamber, Your Honors, on this solemn occasion, mankind is once again assembled before an international tribunal to begin the sober and steady climb upwards toward the towering summit of justice. The path will be strewn with the bones of the dead, the moans of the mutilated, the cries of agony of the tortured echoing down into the valley of death below. Horrors beyond the imagination will slide into this hallowed hall as this trek upward comes to a most certain and just conclusion. The long dark shadows of war are retreating. Pain, agony, the destruction, and the uncertainty are fading. The light of truth, the fresh breeze of justice moves freely about this beaten and broken land. The rule of law marches out of the camps of the downtrodden onward under the banners of never again and no more. A people have stood firm, shoulder to shoulder, staring down the beast, the beast of impunity. The jackals of death, destruction, and inhumanity are caged behind bars of hope and reconciliation. The light of this new day, today, and the many tomorrows ahead are a beginning of the end to the life of that beast of impunity, which howls in frustration and shrinks from the bright and shining spectra of the law. The law has returned to Sierra Leone, and it stands with all Sierra Leoneans against those who seek their destruction. The ghosts of thousands of the murdered dead stand among us. They cry out for a fair and transparent trial to let the world know what took place here, here in Sierra Leone. The tears of the maimed, the mutilated, and the violated will dampen these walls. These victims, their families, their towns, their districts, their country, ask all of us here for a just accounting for the agony of those 10 long years in the valley of death. Mankind has stepped back from the brink of chaos several times in the past 59 years. In 1945, civilization gasped in horror at its capacity to cause suffering. Again, in the early 1990s, reacting to the horrors of Rwanda and Yugoslavia, the world joined in a further step away from the abyss. And now, in West Africa, in Sierra Leone, another bold and noble step has been taken away from the grim jaws of the beast. The special court for Sierra Leone a hybrid international war crimes tribunal gives a new century, indeed, a new millennium 
the chance to face down the beast of impunity. Imbued with this new spirit against impunity, as noted in the Rome Statute, which created the International Criminal Court, that during this past century, millions of children and women and men have been victims of unimaginable atrocities that deeply shock the conscience of humanity. And determined to put an end to impunity for the perpetrators of such crime, the special court on behalf of the international community and the people of Sierra Leone is now ready to prosecute those who bear the greatest responsibility for war crimes crimes against humanity and other serious violations of international humanitarian law. Sierra Leone, among all the nations of the world, has stood up and said there that avarice set in motion events that pushed an entire nation over the cliff into wanton and malicious destruction. These events resulted in such crimes as murder, torture, enslavement, terror, looting, and burning inflicted on an overwhelmed and battered, terrorized people. Despite the obvious political dimensions of this conflict, these trials, this trial, are about crimes. And these individuals are indicted for those crimes, the most grievous acts that a person can be charged with by mankind. War crimes and crimes against humanity. The persons sitting in the dock before you, before this nation, before the world, Samuel, Hinga, Norman, the National Coordinator of the Civil Defense Force, CDF, Moinina Fofana, the National Director of War for the CDF, and Aliu Kandewa, the High Priest of the CDF, the top leaders of the CDF, have been indicted for the following international crimes. Crimes against humanity, violations of Article 3 common to the Geneva Conventions and of Additional Protocol 2, and other serious violations of international humanitarian law in violations of Articles 2, 3, and 4 of this court's statute. We allege in the joint indictment of Norman Bufana and Kandua, the following counts. Unlawful killing, count one. Murder as a crime against humanity, punishable under Article 2A of the court's statute and or in the alternative, count two. Violations to life, health, and physical or mental well-being, in particular, Murder, a violation of Article 3 common to the Geneva Conventions and of Additional Protocol 2, punishable under Article 3A of the statute. Physical violence and mental suffering, count three. Inhumane acts, a crime against humanity, punishable under 2I of the statute and or in the alternative, count four. Violence to life, health, and physical or mental well-being of persons, in particular, cruel treatment, a violation of Article 3 common to the Geneva Conventions and of Additional Protocol 2, punishable under Article 3A of the statute. It must be noted for all here today that women and children particularly bore the brunt of this conflict, and we will most assuredly show this fact day in and day out as we give evidence regarding the criminal allegations in the joint indictment. Next, looting and burning, 
Count five, pillage, a violations of Article Three common to the Geneva Convention and of additional protocol two, punishable under Article Three F of the statute. Next, terrorizing the civilian population and collective punishments. Count six, acts of terrorism, a violation of Article Three common to the Geneva Convention and of additional protocol two, punishable under Article 3D of the statute. And count seven, collective punishments, also a violation of Article 3 common to the Geneva Conventions and of additional protocol two, punishable under 3B of our statute. And use of child soldiers, count eight, Enlisting children under the age of 15 years in the armed forces or groups, or using them to participate actively in hostilities and other serious violations of international humanitarian law, punishable under Article 4C of the statute. Highlighting the general allegations in the indictment against the accused, Norman, Bofana, and Panua. That the Civil Defense Force, CDF, was an organized armed faction. That there was a nexus between the armed conflict and that all the acts or missions charged with violations of Article 3 common to the Geneva Convention and of additional protocol to and as other serious violations of international humanitarian law. That the CDF was an organized armed faction comprised of various tribally based traditional hunters. These accused and those who served in the CDF were required to abide by international humanitarian law and the law and customs governing the conduct of armed conflicts. All of these alleged offenses charged were committed within the territory of Sierra Leone under or after 30 November 1996. All of these acts were initially charged in the indictment as crimes against humanity were committed as part of a widespread or systematic attack directed against the civilian population of Sierra Leone, and that the words civilian or civilian population used in this indictment refer to persons who took no active part in the hostilities or were no longer taking an active part in the hostilities, among other general allegations in the indictment. Each and every indictee is individually criminally responsible for the acts or mission charged under 6.1 and 6.3 of the statute. In other words, they are each personally liable for these horrific crimes as if they committed each and every crime themselves. Essentially, the accused sitting here today either planned, instigated, ordered, committed, or otherwise aided, abetted in the planning, preparation, or execution of the crimes laid out in the indictment, and or in the alternative, they in their superior capacities knew or should have known that subordinates were about to commit the acts, charged, or failed to take the necessary and reasonable measures to prevent such acts or to punish those who did. As declared at Nuremberg in 1945, crimes against international law are committed by men, not by abstract entities, and only by punishing individuals who commit such crimes and the provisions of international law be enforced. In principle one, the principles of international law recognized in the charter of the Nuremberg Tribunal and in the judgment of the tribunal, those found guilty of the crime charged, but also of preventing a collective guilt syndrome by diminishing the tendency to ostracize a specific ethnic group or national group and the need for revenge, it contributes to the process of national reconciliation. Individual responsibility serves the very important purpose of avoiding a collective guilt syndrome, avoiding laying guilt upon a whole people, ethnic group, or national organization because of the misdeeds and manipulation of perpetrators associated with that particular group. Likewise, members of such groups are not individually criminally liable for acts or omissions committed by other members or of their leaders. 
These considerations certainly can help heal the wounds of war. In general, as alleged in their joint indictment, Norman was in overall command of the CDF, the National Coordinator. His job was to establish, organize, support, and promote the CDF. He was also the leader of the Commodores and had the jury and de facto command and control command authority over special mission units in the CDF. In the positions referred to above, Norman, Fofana, and Kondawa individually or in concert exercised authority, command, and control over all subordinate members of the CDF. Their plan and purpose and that of their subordinates was to defeat by any means necessary the Revolutionary United Front, RUF, to include the complete elimination of the RUF and members of the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, AFRC, their supporters, sympathizers, and anyone who did not actively resist the RUF slash AFRC occupation of Sierra Leone. Each of these accused acted individually and in concert with subordinates to carry out this plan purpose, or design. For these acts or omissions, we allege that Norman, Fofana, and Kondawa are each individually criminally responsible pursuant to Article 6.1 of the statute for the crimes alleged in the indictment, which crimes each of them planned, instigated, ordered, committed, or in the whose planning, preparation, or execution each accused otherwise aided and abetted or which crimes were within a common purpose, plan, or design in which each accused participated or were reasonably foreseeable consequences of the common purpose, plan, or design in which each accused participated. Additionally, or alternatively, pursuant to Article 6.3, the accused, Norman, Bobana, and Kondwa, while holding these positions of superior responsibility and exercising command and control over their subordinates, are individually criminally responsible for the crimes referred to in the indictment. Each of these accused is responsible for the criminal acts of his subordinates in that he knew or had reason to know that the subordinate was about to commit such acts or had done so and each accused failed to take the necessary and reasonable measures to prevent such acts in Sierra Leone. As stated, the Crime Basin Center in the southern and eastern regions of Sierra Leone, mainly in the districts of Bon, Pujahun, Moyamba, Kenema, and Bo. The time frame is generally focused between November 1997 to March of 1998. This time period will most certainly capture the rest just die of the crimes alleged to be committed by the accused. The crimes will be proven in large part by the people of Sierra Leone. Witnesses to events that will make men of civility and reason recoil. They will come before you one by one, damaged, proud, some afraid, yet still brave, and determined citizens who shouted in the valley of death, never again, no more. These citizens will testify to such acts or omissions by the accused, Norman, Bofana, and Kondawa, as those alleged crimes committed against a citizen of Sierra Leone in the town of Bradford. The witness alleges that the CDF moved into the town and began to loot rice supplies throughout the day and returned a few days later to do more looting. The witness, his wife and daughter, hid in a banana plantation to avoid capture by members of the CDF. The witness alleges that they did capture his wife and robbed her of their life savings of 600,000 million. They then shot her and left her for dead. The witness recalls her calling his name as she died. After the CDF left, he went to her side, but she was gone. Their five-year-old daughter sitting by her mother's corpse. Other citizens will testify in a letter that in Congo in 1997 and 1998 at the time called Cyborg, period where the Revolutionary United Front called themselves Cyborg and opened the Cyborg Pit, a 
RUF forced people to mine for diamonds. The Commodores and the CDF took the mine after the RUF pulled out. Allegedly, throughout the day, the Commodores picked people at random and hacked them to death. The standard CDF tactic. The witness will further allege that he was in a captured group that the CDF took to a location near Condalu. Later, released, the witness and those Serleonians with him were told to follow the main highway to Kenema. Others, who had been hiding in the bush, joined the group along the way and walked until they were stopped at the fateful bridge at Tambon where other commodores arrested them for allegedly being collaborators. The excuse of collaboration was used frequently to justify their criminal acts. There are around 65 human beings taken out behind the house. The witness will testify. They were told that anyone who used the road they had traveled on were to be killed separated into groups of three to four. They were shot. Their bodies were then rolled down a hill into a valley below. At first, the CDF used their weapons to execute them until they got to the last 10. When the CDF realized that they needed the rounds for combat, they began to cut the heads of the remaining 10. One at a time. The witness was cut in the neck from behind and rolled down the hill. He was the last victim of the group and had watched as those in front of him died one at a time. Though a damaged and broken man, he will be here in this chamber to tell his story. With the CDF, the numbers of victims are not on the scale of Rwanda, but there were thousands. Regardless, there can be no impunity, even for the death of one person. The pain and suffering of the victims of crime spelled out in the indictment against Norman Kandua and Fofana were agonizing the crimes beyond imagination. The essential aspects of this case against these indictees, Norman, Fofana, and Kandua, is about a breach of duty perverted into a killing frenzy against innocent civilians, non-combatants, their own fellow citizens, even their own tribesmen, the Mende people. The organization called the CDF, an armed faction set up to counter the internal threat of the RUF and later the AFRC, led by Norman and assisted by Kandua and Fofana, and largely supported by the hunting society called the Commodores, who filled the ranks of the CDF, had a duty to defend and protect the people of Sierra Leone in the southern and eastern regions of the country in particular. This duty was even more manifest by the fact that the indictee Norman was a regent chief of Corabundo, a location we will mention in a few moments as a crime scene. Norman, Kandua, and Fofana tragically failed in that duty by being unable to push the other organized armed factions out and in their frustration turned on their own people, their fellow citizens and the Mende people, whom they declared to be collaborators of the RUF or AFRC in such districts and places as Bon, Pujo, Bo, Kenema, Moyamba, killing field of Congo and the black hole of base zero. The issues before you are not and cannot be political. We have not charged political crimes. The court of law, this chamber, must focus on the alleged criminal acts of these jointly charged indictees. Politics must remain barred from these proceedings. Respectful, you must focus your energy on whether, beyond a reasonable doubt, these accused committed crimes, grievous crimes, listed in the indictment against their own people, the people of Sierra Leone. 
We allege that the accused committed international crimes, their actions were criminal acts, their mindsets criminal, not political. Now, defending one's nation isn't just cause. It is accomplished by an honored and necessary profession, the profession of arms, which for centuries has adhered to the laws of armed conflict. The just cause of a civil defense force in Sierra Leone set up to defend the nation became perverted and was twisted beyond measure by Norman, Condor, and Mopana. Under their leadership, these accused war criminals turned what should have been a just cause into an unjust effect. Serious breaches of the laws designed to protect humanity. These so-called defenders of the nation were really offenders of the nation, looking out for their own self-interests. Again, they had a duty to defend and protect, and they failed criminally in that duty and turned against their own people and institutions such as the Sierra Leonean police, for example. Keep this in mind. They are charged with crimes as individuals, jointly and severally, not with political acts. This joint indictment is not a joint indictment of what could have been an important force for good organization called the CDF, the organization that these indictees perverted. Nor do we indict the cultural traditions or the concept of the centuries-old hunting societies such as the Commonwealth. In this chamber, in this indictment, we condemn alleged criminals for what they did as individuals. Murder, terror, looting, burning, collective punishment and recruiting child soldiers, among other war crimes and crimes against humanity. Let me cite an example of this breach of duty and indeed individual criminal responsibility, as well as this perversion of a just cause. On or about 13 February 1998, due to an attack by the Commodores on Corabundo, one of our witnesses will testify that he and others were advised to flee to Bo. The witness fled to his brother's house in Bo. However, by then the Commodores arrived, scouring the town for those persons who fled from Corabundo. The witness will state that he was caught along with his brother and taken to the Commodore headquarters where they were beaten and tortured. Their captors said that they were going to kill and cook his brother that day. The witness will state that afterwards they took them both out back and standing among other bodies, cut his brother's throat. The witness will state that he tried to turn away, but his head was held and he was forced to watch his own brother die. The witness you will hear testify will say that the Commodores told him to go back and tell the people of Corabundo what should happen if they collaborated with the Sierra Leonean Army, the SLA. The witness returned to Corabundo, noticing many graves along the road. A short time later, the witness will state that King Norman himself came to Corabundo I recall he is their regent chief, and held a meeting at the town bar. At this meeting, allegedly, Norman told the townspeople that they should not hold the commodores responsible for what they had done in the town, but that they should hold him responsible, that they were acting on his orders. This witness will state that Norman declared that, in fact, he was disappointed in the Commodores because he had ordered them to burn every living thing, even the ants, he allegedly said, and he rebuked them for being afraid to kill. No one deserves to live in circumstances like this, to die like this, 
to witness the horrors perpetrated by all sides, and most certainly by those accused who twisted a just cause into a just perversion. We will most assuredly show you, through witness after witness, what the result of these unjust acts or omissions caused, the murder, mutilation, and maiming of thousands, the looting and burning of entire towns, terrorizing an entire nation. Anytime the citizens of a nation rise up to seek a just accounting for 10 years of painful war, the international community must respond. And it has. Just look around you today. If I may, I will close my portion of this opening statement with a poem from a Sierra Leonean, Sidnella Shooter, published recently in Freetown, entitled Songs That Pour the Heart. It is called My Root in Flames. Massive eruption everywhere, consuming my town and bush, my cherished cradle, my ancestral shrine, all ablaze. I turned around, my eyes catch but a mound of ash, the ash of my kin's sweat. Blood can't quench this fire, leaping through my blood. There is no fame in these flames, but ash that brings pain, ash with the stain, the ash of the slain. This ash that bleeds hearts has nothing on the screen but incinerating Sierra Leone, vomiting and flaring up. Can we read the Chronicles of Ash? And ash in Chronicles. When my foundation is raised to cinders and ash, ash weakening hearts, ash withering glories, ash that never carries atrocities, devoting my life. Let justice be done. Your Honor, that concludes your opening.